Today we're going to talk about the Four Swords. Um, this is one particular game that I have very fond memories about. It is a simple game, it was released as a mere bonus game next to a re-release of The Link to the Past on the Game Boy Advance, but despite being a simple bonus feature, it actually does deserve to have a look on its own. It's a very simple game, the story is provided in a very short introduction, Princess Zelda is telling Link about the ancient sword known as Four Swords. Apparently she's concerned about the seal being weakened and her suspicions turn out to be on point because all of a sudden, just as they're checking the sword, Vati happens to escape from the seal. He kidnaps the princess and runs away. Link then grabs the sword, it turns him into four copies, so we have four links now, and that's it as far as the story goes. This is our established story. It's simple, you know, it doesn't... I can't say that it's original, it's not Shakespeare or anything, it's pretty simple. It's a very short introduction, I gotta say that visually it looks great, the music is nice, I like the introduction, it's nice, it's pretty short, and it's easy for anyone to pick up the game, so that's the point, it's supposed to be a multiplayer game, uh, you wanna have it able to have anyone introduced to it, so anyone can just pick up and play. The cool thing is that you can watch the intro while you're setting up the link cables, so that's kind of neat. The gameplay is pretty simple, just like uh, any Zelda before. Most of the items are being reused from the previous Zelda games. The mechanics are pretty much the same, nothing changed all that much. If you're familiar with the series, you can easily just pick up and play. Uh, but if you're new to it, there is a non-mandatory tutorial level that you can play to learn about the mechanics. The game itself is uh, very short and you can probably beat it uh, in around an hour with very little problem. The genius of it is that despite of it being very simple and very short, there is a lot of replay value to it. There are four levels which are, when, when they are being played, they always change a little bit. You know, there's different parts to it, then they different combinations and some of them are unique. And as you beat the game, you can play the same levels again, but they will become harder and they will also change a little bit. So it's a pretty cool balance between the game being easy and you can pick it up and just play it, have a lot of fun, but there's also replay value. You can play it multiple times with different people, so that's cool. Of course, as this is a multiplayer game and the levels and the enemies, they're also designed to be overcome as a team, so this is a little bit different from normal Zelda games where usually you're on your own. Cooperation here is required. You can play with two to four players uh, and then you'll have a puzzle and the puzzles and the enemies they will also change depending on the number of players you have so you can always play with two or four people just the same there's no problem but you need to have someone you can't solo play. Uh, the cool thing is that players uh, they will need to work together in order to in order to, to win. You can't do it anything else. But on the other side, there's still competition elements to it. You know, while you work together, you also compete for rupees, and you're incentivized to compete for rupees. So the game has a very interesting mix of working together and competing against each other going on there. Which also adds a lot of replay value, again, because even if you played the levels before, you know them you know, you've beat them before, you know what's going on, you can still just compete for rupees and make it a competitive game. There really isn't all that much to collecting rupees, you can't really buy anything with them. The main feature is that you need to collect them and give them to the fairy at the end of the game and she will give you a key, uh, she will give you a key if you collect the proper amount of rupees. Um, they don't explain why a fairy needs money to help you, <laughs> but that's okay, I suppose. And at the end of the level, there's going to be, uh, they're going to display who collected how many rupees, and the player who collected the most rupees will be given a shiny number one spot and a shiny medal. There isn't all that much point to it. You can use these medals to unlock features in the other game, Link to the Past, which is on the same cartridge. Uh, but despite that, there's not much actual reward for being a winner here. But just the way it's being visually represented, you know, the way like you have the sound when you collect rupees, it just feels good to collect rupees and 
it really does fuel competition in a very interesting way and I have good memories with it especially you know as smaller children you know th there would be some very competitive atmosphere going on at the moment <laughs> and we even had like all out rage quitting and <laughs> stuff like that so fun times now all the things that I said about this game make it sound pretty cool you know like a perfect game <laughs> But there is one uh, downside to it, it's pretty hard to be able to play it. You would need to have a Game Boy for every player, and also a link cable. You know, just fulfilling this criteria could be hard. And then you need a cartridge for every player. So this can be a criteria very hard to come by. Uh, especially like, you know, those games were pretty expensive and... It's still not the kind of game that it would be worth buying two copies, like not really, because there isn't that much gameplay, you would be better off buying another game, so in that regard, this is its biggest flaw. I mean, the GBA did support one cartridge multiplayer, but the internal memory was very limited, so because of it, uh, with one cartridge you couldn't do much, and for a game like this, it wouldn't work. So it's unfortunate, it's very unfortunate, a huge the, the huge part of the player base who owned this game was probably never actually able to play it, especially not beat it. It's really a shame that it wasn't released as a bonus game on Diminish Cap, like it wouldn't have cost them that much in production. Uh, Diminish Cap would have enough storage space on it, so I don't know. I guess that they calculated that it doesn't make financial sense. It's a shame. But, you know, it still is a bonus game to the Link to the Past, and maybe the Link to the Past by itself is worth it, so I really can't complain all that much. One last thing that I want to mention about the game is that uh, the ending credits have been turned into a mini game by itself. While the credits are rolling, you're also collecting and competing for rupees, and there's great classic Zelda music, and I don't know, it's pretty cool. Uh, I also gotta say, like, it's pretty cool to have four Game Boys play at the same time. It really, like, the sound sounds pretty awesome compared to just having one Game Boy, but okay. <laughs> now, all of this sounds um, kind of unfortunate that we have a game like this that's pretty cool, but most of the people were never able to play it. Uh, there was a re-release of this game, so-called Four Swords Anniversary Edition, which was released on the 25th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda franchise. And guess what, it was an amazing version as well. Uh, one cool feature is that a single mode is now added, you can control two links at once by yourself, so if you have nobody to play with, it works, how neat. Overall, it's an extremely faithful port, the base game is uh, presented properly and it even has some nice tweaks that take advantage of the DS better sound quality. So, you know, they also have graphics and the sound, it's a little bit better now. So it's pretty cool and there's new features as well, two extra levels. First one is the Realm of Memories. Uh, it has a pretty cool set of levels based on older Zelda games, featuring some really great nostalgia feels if you play the older games. Uh, these levels are, you know, they're designed around the aesthetics of the older game. It's a really cool concept, executed really well. The other one is Hero's Trial, more similar to the original campaigns, and it's just like a lot harder putting hardcore fans to the test here. Overall, this version is perfect, to be honest. Again, <laughs> perfect, sounds perfect, it's not. There is one huge downside to this game, maybe two. First of all, it has local play only. Uh, the DS did have internet, but they didn't put it on this game, so you're, again, only limited to players who are around you, who have their own DS and their own copy of the game. You don't need the link cable now, since DS is wireless. Uh, and there is another very fatal flaw here. This was released as a special anniversary feature, <laughs> and for a limited time only, meaning that you can't get it anymore. It's pretty hard to get your hands on this game. To play it legally, you would, need to tr you would need to track down a DS that would happen to have this game installed. And actually, never mind, you would need to find four DS's with this game installed if you wanted to play it with it in its full potential. Uh, I can't get my mind around this. Why did Nintendo... You know, 
I can understand why Nintendo wanted something special for 25th anniversary. It is a great... It is a cool university. Anniversary, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's really odd that they choose a multiplayer game with uh, local play only. So it really hurts me to feel that there is such an ama... It's really, you know, it hurts me to think that there is such an amazing game out there that will never be played by most of the Zelda fans. <laughs> so that's a shame. I hate to endorse piracy, but my hands are tied here. So I really wish that this uh, game would be re-released re again, maybe on Nintendo Switch or 3DS. Well, 3DS not anymore since it's been discontinued. Maybe it could be, I don't know. Why not? It wouldn't cost them much to put it on 3DS now. Like, wh wh what's the point with Nintendo? I don't get it. Nintendo is so weird. They're such an odd gaming company, like, in some ways they make the best games ever, they're really cool, make the best games ever, best titles ever, some really cool ideas, but on the other side they fail to implement basic multiplayer aspects, basic cloud-based service. <laughs> What's wrong with them? I don't get it, just get your shit together Nintendo. That's all I have to say, I would encourage you to try this game out, if you can track 4DS's with, with it installed, or maybe if you find different ways to do it. Definitely a unique, uh, fun multiplayer experience, and definitely a must-play for Zelda fans. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you.